I think it's important we start this video at the Golden Gate Bridge because one of the most impactful videos I've ever seen was from a guy who jumped and lived. What I'm about to say is the exact same thing that 19 Golden Gate Bridge jump survivors have also said. The millisecond my hands left the rail, it was an instant regret. This is how cynical I am. I started walking on the bridge. I looked over and realized there's a net. Did this guy just jump off into a net and give himself a gold star? Turns out San Francisco just sucks. Over 2000 people have jumped and not made it and they still had no idea what to do until Top Golf came up with the advanced net technology. Needless to say, depression is a mother over 280 million people across the world suffer from it. Some of the highest rates being that of 18 to 25 year olds. The reason I'm so interested in this topic is partly because I was raised by alcoholic wolves. My mom was manic depressant bipolar and we think maybe even a little bit of a split personality. She ended up drinking herself. Today. My dad is one of the best men I know and I wouldn't be where I am without him, but he does have his demons. And while I personally don't fall into the category of what they call major depressive disorder, I'm a horrible procrastinator. My ADHD is insane. Check out all these tabs. I haven't had a drink since I was 17 because every time I did, I would go dark. And I know I have that dog in me. Now, the first obvious question that I would have if I was watching this video is why should I trust you on this topic? You shouldn't. Do your own damn research. Talk to your doctor. This is more of a selfish journey for myself, but I've learned a lot of crazy things along the way that I think are going to help a lot of people. Like getting my brain scanned, it all makes sense now. Now, to really dive into the science of depression, we have to first have a basic understanding of the human brain. Your brain has over 100 billion neurons. It looks a little something like this, but also not even close because that's the brain of a fruit fly. A neuron is just a cell. It's a nerve cell. They have all the normal shit like every other cell. Your nucleus, your ribosomes, your good old Golgi apparatus, which I always forget what that's for. The difference being is they have what are called dendrites, which receive information from other neurons, as well as this kick-ass looking tail called an axon, which sends information. And the connection between the axon terminal and another neuron's dendrite is where the magic happens. But as you can see, these things are about as Mormon as they get because they don't soak, they don't even touch, they just maintain a 20 nanometer gap between each other and the way they communicate is by releasing neurotransmitters. Now the reason that was so important to go over is because neurotransmitters are the reason you experience anything in life. Which that alone is kind of depressing to think about. It means that warm and fuzzy feeling you get when you think about the first time you touched a boob isn't because it was a magical moment. It was just because of a neurotransmitter cocktail going on in your brain and they sure as hell didn't look like that. The discovery of those neurotransmitters subsequently led to the development of different classes of antidepressants, the most infamous being selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. I don't know about you, but I probably know a good 75 freaking people on SSRIs. Now, in order to dig into the efficacy of some of these antidepressants and look at some of the meta-analyses that compare them to placebos, we first need to talk about the Hamilton Depression Rating Score. It's the most commonly used questionnaire that judges the severity of your depression based upon these 17 questions. And I know, you would think it's 2024, we can do better. I just took this and I'm having a great day. I scored a fucking 15. This is commonly what's used in clinical trials to judge the effectiveness of antidepressants. You're trying to bring the score down. Again, before I get into the numbers, if you take antidepressants and they work for you, then who gives a shit what I say? If it keeps you from turning heel and going full Chris Benoit, that's all that matters. You keep doing you. But with that being said, they are clouded in controversy. SSRIs, for example, are only effective over that of the placebo for people that scale above a 28 on the Hamilton depression rating scale. Those are people that are severely, severely depressed. A meta-analysis looking at clinical trials submitted to the FDA for approval of six different antidepressants that included both published and unpublished trials, which is a very important point. Turns out the FDA requires two adequately conducted clinical trials showing a significant difference between the drug tested and a placebo, but the loophole is you can submit as many clinical trials as you want. Nearly half the trials were unpublished, and of that, only 43% showed a significant difference over the placebo, the other 57% were either no difference at all or, or a negative effect. And even those percentages are skewed because a large number of those trials have what's known as a run-in period. For the first two weeks, everybody gets the placebo. Anybody who sees a positive benefit, 
gets kicked out. Again, those who are categorized as severely depressed, they score above a 28 on the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale, do see a significant improvement from antidepressants. On average, they have a four-point improvement. But even that I have to grit my teeth when I say, because just changing your sleep patterns alone led to a six-point improvement on average. Here's the thing. Pharmaceutical companies aren't wrong in their thinking. There's a direct link between serotonin and depression. But there's also a direct link between depression and imbalances in pretty much every other neurotransmitter. That's why there's antidepressants dedicated to each of them. Issue with treating depression is that it's multifactorial and incredibly complex. So much so, have you ever heard of SSREs? Selective serotonin reuptake enhancers. They're exactly what they sound like and the exact opposite of SSRIs. So you would think if someone with depression took those, they would get even worse, but they don't. The effects are virtually identical to SSRIs. Kind of fuckery is this? I think that fact alone sheds light on why antidepressants are less effective than advertised. It comes down to correlation versus causation. The original chemical imbalance theory was based upon the fact that they took blood from a bunch of people with major depressive disorder and realized they had low serotonin levels, so they thought that must be the cause. When in reality, it was probably more of a contributing factor. That's like saying the fact that you haven't seen your dad since that one morning he went out to get milk is because every store must be out of milk. Instead of the truth that you're a disappointment. Even if you disregard all of that, I think the biggest issue I have with them is that over 90% of the serotonin produced in your body is produced in your gut. And when you take SSRIs, they have an antimicrobial effect. So over time, it lowers your gut biome, which we know causes digestive problems, sleep issues, infections, and wouldn't you know it, mood disorders. They are literally causing the thing they are attempting to fix. So if those medications are only viable for a small population of people, then what should we look into next? The beautiful part about this channel is I've been able to develop a community that turns out is just as messed up as I am. I sent out one email about depression and what I got back were hundreds of emails from people with their own personal experiences and things that they've taken that have helped them along the way so let's get into it. I read through every goddamn illiterate email that you guys sent and categorized them. The first one I'm gonna label as deficiencies. They were your vitamin Ds, your L-carnitines, magnesium. These are the things that have been linked to depression if you don't get in or have a adequate amount. Now in the past, I would've said this is an easy fix. Let's just start supplementing all of these and basically throw sh at the wall and see what sticks. I didn't really think about the logistical side of filming this shot until after I did it. It's a bad choice. But recently, I flew to Austin to eat barbecue. And while I was there, I also got an EEG of my brain that measured the individual bandwidths, the delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma. And when I got my results back, the clinician started out by showing me what a healthy brain looks like. Now, this is a sample. Immediately, I knew it was going to be bad because that's code for yours looks nothing like this. Here we go. So, this is a low voltage. EEG. No shit, I'm not a Sullivan Learning Center alumni and I didn't have to stay every day at recess to practice cursive because I'm a baby fucking genius. I get so distracted researching for these videos, I have Mr. Beast read me the case studies. Mental health concerns, microdosers exhibited lower levels of- What was most fascinating for me though is when she said- You see these little bumps here? One of these bumps is your MTHFR mutation gene. MTHFR, which is also known as the motherfucker gene, is a catalyst that helps convert the folate that you ingest into the biologically available version that is required for the production of neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. Which is wild to me that in the process of doing research about depression in the hopes of helping other people, I might have figured out why I feel nothing. Which brings me back to my original point, that if I continued that shotgun method of taking any supplement that's ever been linked to depression, I would have inevitably ended up on B vitamins and if I was more of a trusting individual, I very easily could have bought them from Costco and ended up with the Super B Complex, which has regular old folate in here. It's not methylated and it would have made things even worse. So what would I recommend you do? Exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get an Alcat test, which is gonna see if any food I've been ingesting is causing any chronic inflammation or gastrointestinal issues because both of those things have been linked to depression. Also a micronutrient deficiency test that will identify different vitamins, minerals, aminos, Yada, yada, yada. That way I can have a custom supplement built for how uniquely screwed up I am. And finally, I'm gonna get a methyl detox panel that will identify the type and severity of that motherfucker gene mutation. And then again, I can get a custom supplement made that will ensure proper nutrient use without taxing my already jacked up conversion processes. Because left unchecked, that gene mutation, which has been estimated that 40% of the population has, leads to high homocysteine levels, which has been associated with heart disease, stroke, 
neurological issue. Because as much as I would love my wife to spend the last 10 years of her life wiping my ass, I want to be a part of that inside joke. Otherwise, what's the point? Now, there were some emails from people with suggestions that I'm just going to categorize as shut up and do it. The first one is make sure your diet has enough L-tryptophan. That should be easy for anybody who's a meat eater, but I was vegan for five years and that probably led to my demise. And supplementing has been shown to be not as good as getting it from whole food sources. It's involved in the synthesis of serotonin. The other thing on the list is creatine. I know. Woo, creatine. Not the most exciting, but even with people who have adequate levels, it's been shown to boost your brain's capacity to produce ATP. So just take it. Shut the fuck up. The last set of suggestions and emails I got from people is what I would categorize as when shit hits the fan. What do you do when you're in a deep depression? How do you pull yourself out of the darkness? There was three recommendations that I got over and over again that the science definitely backs up. One of which I keep in my freezer at all times just as a breaking case of emergency. Psilocybin. The majority of research around psilocybin has been done with large single doses, but the majority of emails I got from people who've said they had success with it were with microdosing. So do with that what you may. Both seem like legitimate options since they've tossed aside the theory of a chemical imbalance and now the new model of depression is dysregulated neuronal connectivity with degeneration or atrophy. Or said plainly, the nerve cells in your brain can't talk to each other, so your brain starts to shrink, which is terrifying because I can't afford any more shrinkage. The reason there's so much excitement around psilocybin and the second most suggested thing by you guys, ketamine, is because they've both been shown to restore synaptic connectivity, stimulating the formation and growth of the dendrites we talked about earlier. And yes, antidepressants can do that too, but it's within months. With psilocybin and ketamine, it's within hours. Also, they don't have a site dedicated to them where people hold up signs that say antidepressants broke my dick. So that's good. The last one should be an obvious one based upon the people that watch this channel, but it's working out. I did find an interesting study that showed the level of the antidepressant effect of your training was based upon the intensity that you trained with, which gave me a brilliantly dumb idea to make the next training program I produce, one where we just kill ourselves for 30 days. Who gives a shit? You'll grow probably, but it's more about hurting yourself in a healthy antidepressant-like way. We'll call it something fucked up too. For the next two months, I'll be doing transcranial magnetic stimulation therapy, so I'll let you know how that goes. As always, programs are linked below, so if you need to build muscle, buy one of those. And most importantly, don't forget, there's beauty even in darkness.